Okay. Well, today, the one thing that I'm doing to my Atlas that I never had before, and this will be a huge plus for my wood turning, is I'm adding a drum switch to it. And I'll be able to reverse the rotation of them. About three feet, five strands that I need a 12 gauge wire to go from my switch to the motor and some plastic connectors so I can shield the wires inside this uh, conduit. Uh, it's plastic. Pull this power wire out of here and that's going to go into my new switch. Okay, remove this junction, this connector. Okay, so right now I got these five leads going in here. One, two, three, four, where's my fifth? Right here. The number two and number four to stay connected out of these wires right here. So one of these will be labeled two, one is labeled four, which is the bottom of this diagram. Can you see that? number four and I need number two as well which I believe is this one right here if I'm looking at that that looks like number two right there but that's the only place I see it so this one and this one will stay in this bunch so this one And these two stay bundled up. This one will go to my red wire. Let me get my strippers. I will strip the red and I will mark this on my diagram as well. Mark this as red. On my drawing. Label that five right there coming out red. Okay, think you can see that red that's going to come to my T5, uh, my number three position on the switch. And if it's reversed by any chance on the markings, all I have to do is jump these two inside the switch, reverse those two either way. So that's one. My next wire to hook up this yellow, the neutral or the line two from the power source. So this will go by itself to number two, the white. I'm going to label that white. Okay. So this one and this junction right here have to be together as well. Okay, so that takes care of that junction. I still have the blue is my last real live wire that I have to work with. And it will come up to this group right here. This one I was able to find pretty well. Eight is the one that gets separated from this bunch right here. And that one will get uh, go to the blue wire. Eight. These two stay together. Why not it back? So 
So this connection is done. This is really the last of the electric electric connections that I have. Just get in there. Okay. That looks pretty good. Okay, loop this up. Put it back here. There we go. Now, I've hooked up my blue wire. Let me label my my paper here with the blue on there. Blue. So, I have the red wire that's going to hook up to this uh, four positions. One, two, three, I'm sorry, to the three position. And I got the blue wire that jumps over and comes up to the four position. And to, if you look at this side, you can see that depending on the position of the switch, it powers one pole or the other, but never both. So with that being all done, really at this point, I'm ready to close up this uh, plate and put everything back. I don't need to open up this box again for anything else. I know all my connections are good. They're all secure. They're protected uh, uh, with the wire knots. There's no bare wires showing anywhere. And I have all the wires coming up out of the other end of the pipe and that will go into the switch box, a new uh, switch box. Two wires, the ones that were originally hooked up inside of the motor, powering it up, that will go to the opposite side. And this is my line one, line two, plus the ground in there. And that way, uh, that's what's going to, to feed the power uh, to the uh, drum switch. And in turn, it will reverse the polarities over here. And that's all that the drum switch really does is just reverse the uh, which uh, feed, which lead is uh, getting power, whether if it's the uh, red wire or the blue wire. And depending on which one it is, that uh, uh, makes it spin in that particular direction. Now what I'm working over here is a Sentry one and a half horse from duty motor. Okay, sorry about that. Well, anyway, so basically fed this connector to the back of the conduit, put the wires through, and get this lock nut going through all the wires and lock this up into the box. Now, I want to do it work out here with this because it will make life a lot easier than me having this already mounted underneath the uh, the laid bed. Now these two that are marked right here on this side the L1 and L2 will be these two wires that came from the motor itself. Okay to connect to the top and the bottom of these but before I do that, I need these wires to come up over here. The, the two middle ones, this one and this one, are the two that red and blue. So I can take one to this side, leave a little bit of extra wire in there because I might have to reverse that. I might have to uh, have the blue go to the opposite side. Um, in the event, that I'm in reverse, which uh, I could very well be. So I will leave a little bit of extra wire in here, bring it up, coil it, bring it back, and then make it to do the connection in here from the, uh, I have to actually see how they, uh, they hook up. I'm sure that it's a feed through, but I want to verify. Well, I got both sides wired up here. 
I got the motor end and this gray wire over here this is my common and my neutral coming from my switch my knockoff switch that will cut off the power to all of this so all my collection uh, connections in here look pretty good I got plenty of wire where if I need to reverse the blue and the red uh, to opposite sides in the event that the motor is running backwards um, that will work and right now what I'm ready to do is to mount this up right here for my forward and my reverse uh, capabilities of the motor. So before closing it up, I'm going to turn on power to the lathe over here and test it out now. Nothing should happen with an off because the mat, because the drum switch is off. So now if I kick this on, still nothing happens to the drum switch, so that's working correctly. Beautiful. Um, all of the functions of the drum switch are working at this point. Let me back you up a little bit. So I got my main on off and I have the drum forward and reverse. Now as I suspected it's wired in the opposite uh, way so I have to take the wire that comes from this side of the switch to this one and the one the red from this side into that side and the whole thing will be uh, uh, correct and uh, yeah it's really not all that complicated and I know that to an electrician or somebody who really understands these diagrams uh, this is baby stuff and but to some of us who are not electricians but are do-it-yourselfers uh, solvers in a lot of stuff um, you know it's, uh, that's what you do but the number one thing on this if you're a do-it-yourselfer and you don't understand the very basics of electricity stop so anyway I understand the very basics of electricity uh, uh, and not new to it the number one thing you gotta do is make sure that you have no power going to the equipment that you're working at. Unplug it, go shut off the circuit breaker, uh, do whatever, but you got to make yourself safe. You don't need the power to be on on that machine for you to be testing things with it live. You follow the diagram, you understand the components on how they work together with one or each other, you make those connections, then you, turn, you plug it in, then you try and you see that everything should function correctly. If anything doesn't function correctly right at that time, shut it off, unplug it, and call a professional. Unless you can see right away what you did wrong. But if you did something wrong, most likely you are still questioning on how things go. So uh, my suggestion is if you can't get it by yourself or if you really can't solve the problem and you Think that you're going to require some help call somebody who knows uh, what's going on with the principles of electricity well thank you very much for watching this and i apologize i know that's not woods turning uh, i much rather do the woods turning than do what i just did here but what i did here is necessary for me to be able to enjoy woods turning even more i've never turned on the lathe on a reverse uh mode of action I'm going to try that. Uh, I can already see, uh, you know, I know that I will need to lock my chuck up, uh, put my screw in there, my own screw, and make sure that it's not going to go anywhere. But uh, uh, try this up on a reverse motion and uh, we'll see. And here I am, back with my Atlas. And, uh, you know, again, I'm not knocking that lathe 
And if the only lathe I had was that red one, if that was my only lathe or my first lathe, I would have gotten used to it and I probably would have thought that it was better than this one. But that's not the case. The case is the other way around. I only got that lathe on two reasons. I got that lathe for two reasons. Number one was the, uh, the, uh, the speed change. It's like, oh my God, you know, can I incorporate that speed change to my ass? And I realized that it's too much Mickey Mousey to be able to, uh, to do that switch and have a good lathe. You'd have a lathe that you could do that, but it would be Mickey Mouse, and I don't like Mickey Mouse and stuff. And uh, the other thing, it also came with a chuck. So if I paid $100 for the lathe with a $100 chuck, the way I look at it is I got a free chuck. Or I paid for a chuck that came attached to a lathe. Whichever way I want to look at it. And I had been looking at chucks because one chuck to a lathe really is not the best situation. I'm, I know many of you only have a single chuck. I've had a single chuck till now. And I still only have a single chuck that I can use because the two lathes that I got, they are both two different types of treads. This one is a 110, that one is a, uh, yeah, this one is a 110, that one is a 18. So it's not like I can use them. I still have to buy an insert on, uh, for the chuck that was on the red lathe so it fits my 110 oddball thread size on my atlas. But my atlas is going to stay my running machine. Take care, see you soon.